I'm Nicolette, and today Brian and I are here with Jim Witham again, and uh, he is the CEO over at GAN Systems, and we are going to talk today about power and GAN and the future of GAN and what we can expect in 2021. So thank you so much again for joining us, Jim. We appreciate your time. Glad to be here, Nicolette. All right, so 2021. Uh, it's uh, you actually just released a recent uh, a recent uh, predictions piece over again, but I think the first thing we want to talk about, Jim, is really how have things changed over the past year? You know, um, in your predictions that I mentioned, you, you were talking about tech moving from early adoption to mainstream. So, what would you say was really a significant happening in 2020? Yeah, 2020, what a year, huh? Um, yeah. Probably, I think three things jumped to mind. Um, you know, first and foremost is um, 2020 was the year of the GAN charger and GAN adapters um, in the marketplace. Um, over 100 companies came out with uh, uh, GAN chargers during the year. Um, second big item um, for us was AutoQual Plus. Um, what that is, is that's our reliability um, program where we sat down with industry leaders to define kind of what is the test plan for GAN to be an automotive. And we've passed all those tests. So, you know, GAN systems ex has exceeded that reliability bar. So AutoQual Plus was a big story. And then um, I think the third big item was name brands using um, GAN in 2020. Um, in the charger area, you know, companies like Huawei, Oppo, Xiaomi, Philips, you know, all came out with uh, um, GAN adapters. Um, in the industrial space, we saw CUI and Fihong um, bring, bring out items, uh, Siemens and factory motors. Um, and then in the automotive front, um, Formula E race cars with GAN in it. Um, and then the announcement of the canoe EV skateboard um, using GAN. Um, we're all kind of big names um, showing that uh, they've made the jump to GAN. So what would you consider then, you know, to be one of the most successful uses of GAN this year? Um, you know, certainly chargers, um, certainly automotive, um, but, you know, people have kind of known about that. I think the news um, is GAN audio. GAN audio. Um, the, uh, um, we came out with a reference design at CES um, uh, last year, so CES 2020, um, that had both uh, um, GAN power supplies, because you need to get nice, um, steady power supplies, mm -hmm. and uh, um, GAN Class D amplifiers. And it's kind of mm -hmm. taken the audio um, uh, industry by storm. Um, I tell you, if you've ever um, sat in a sound room like I have, um, with a, a silicon amplifier um, playing the music and then having the GAN amplifier play the music. There's an incredible um, difference um, in, in sound. And uh, um, so I think that's kind of was big news in 20, 2020. Can you, can you talk a little bit more about the GAN amplifier? Like just um, overall? Yeah, sure. Um, um, these are, you know, uh, class D amplifiers. Um, they're, they're meant to reproduce the sound kind of as it, you know, was recorded. Um, and in order to do that, um, you have to have really fast transistors, transistors that can turn on and turn off um, at the same rate of speed as the music itself. Um, mm -hmm. Silicon's too slow, GAN's fast enough. And that ability um, to reproduce the music um, is, is, uh, is clear in our ears. I mean, humans are incredible. Our eyes and our ears are such um, incredible sensors um, and we can hear the difference. So do you see that being adopted, like that being a widespread adoption for 2021, sort of the same way we saw the chargers coming out, the GAN chargers in 2020? Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, 2020 people were designing and in 2021, you're going to see some uh, really cool products out there in the marketplace. Nice. Would, would you say, Jim, I mean, it seems like now that there are some big companies, you know, really starting to implement and next is audio, would you say there are some industries that were having a little bit of a more challenging time adapting? Um, yeah, you know, Nicolette, I don't think that I would say so much it's, you know, industries um, that are having mm -hmm. the challenge. It's more companies. Um, okay. And I think it really comes down to company culture. 
you know, we yeah. find that, you know, some companies are very innovative. They kind of lean forward. They, they want to have, you know, products out in front of the marketplace and, and be seen as a technology um, leader, a product leader. And then mm-hmm. there's, you know, more conservative companies that, that take a, a lot longer. Um, and so um, we've seen um, the early adopters, you know, they're out there in the marketplace. You see the teardowns. Um, but since we've been shipping uh, product for five years, we're also now seeing those companies with the more conservative culture um, also starting to roll out products. So, so really the timing, I think, comes down to the culture of the company. Now, you, you mentioned, you also mentioned automotive, right? And so, what, so what, what's being implemented in the automotive uh, industry in terms of GAN right now? Yeah, the, um, well, kind of the, the onboard charger, the DC mm-hmm. to DC converter, and then the combo of the two together, the onboard charger, DC to DC converters, it's kind of a no-brainer um, for right. GAN. Um, high frequency means you can make things very small. Um, you can also make them efficient. So mm-hmm. it extends the range of the car. You can use fewer batteries um, in the car. So um, it, it really is a no-brainer. Um, the other big area is traction inverter. That's a low frequency um, application. So, you know, the first um, um, pass, people might think GAN, silicon carbide, um, probably equal. Um, But what we find um, is that uh, um, there's really two kinds of applications. Um, Mm -hmm. Applications that, you know, need acceleration uh, all the time, kind of like long haul trucking. Um, That's one type of application. Um, the other application is something that's more start and stop around town, um, you know, traffic lights and turns. Mm-hmm. Um, the former um, kind of favors the silicon carbide design. Um, the latter, um, the start and stop profile, the city car favors GAN. So we're seeing both of those um, uh, also used in traction inverters. You know, another thing you, you mentioned um, in that, predictions article, which I'm going to link to for everybody to read, you were talking about the increased demand, right, for um, adoption of GAN powered products across multiple markets, consumer, industrial in particular. Is there something that you would say is contributing to that demand? Um, Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, in, in general, um, there's more electronics in our life. Mm-hmm. Um, there's more data in our, in our lives. Um, and those require power. Um, and so power electronics is a, is a you know, ever increasing element in our lives. And with GAN transistors, you can make those devices more efficient. Um, so mm-hmm. you lose less energy, that's green and clean. Um, and um, you can make them smaller and uh, um, lighter weight. So you, you lose what you use less materials, less aluminum, less copper, um, less plastic, less heat sinks. Um, and so that's green also. And so I think this, this, over, um, this overarching drive of more electronics and more data in our lives means that we've got to use power electronics that are more efficient and that drives people to using GAN. You mentioned green in there too. Is that kind of one of those driving factors too? That we're kind of going green as a as a world, uh, well, as a country, I should say, even. Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, you know, and this is being seen kind of all over the world. The European Union just released uh, a new specification that says you have to have um, more efficient uh, power supplies, more efficient server racks. Um, and you know, COVID is only you know um, 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 you know made that, uh, that trend um, even more. Um, we're all sitting at home, we're all doing Zoom meetings, we're all doing team meetings, we're all consuming um, more data. And so uh, um, data center um, growth is, is skyrocketing. New data centers are being put in all the time. Governments are now getting, getting involved and in saying, hey, you gotta make these things uh, um, uh, uh, efficient so that uh, um, we, we, we use our resources wisely. Do you think we're also going to see some more of it? You know, we talked about vehicles, right? With autonomous vehicles and doing deliveries and things like that in the future. Or do you think we're going to see a lot more implemented in those autonomous type deliveries? Due to yeah, things like- I mean, absolutely. There's some, um, there's some really cool vehicles um, that I've seen um, our customers um, 
you know, building the, the power electronics for, but also doing the autonomous driving um, systems. And, um, you know, I, I can't comment on them because they haven't released um, uh, um, their, their press releases yet. Uh -huh. But I tell you, there's some really neat products that are going to be um, out in the marketplace. Um, and, you know, we've seen um, delivery, delivery services are convenient, has really helped out in the COVID times. Mm -hmm. But I think it's going to become ingrained in our lives, just like, you know, video conferencing is going to happen more in the business environment. Um, we're going to expect to have our, we're going to shop online and expect to have it um, be delivered to our home. And so right. autonomous vehicles are only going to become more and more a part of our lives. Well, you guys jumped, jumped into my mind for a second because I was, I was <laughs> going to, one of the things I wanted to talk about was, was if the pandemic was impacting any of these industries in terms of, and I think we've talked about yeah, it. You, you know, of, if it uh, goes down any, any route of robots or autonomous vehicles, I'm all about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, you know, it certainly, you know, affected all of our lives in a lot of negative ways. It's, you know, 2020 has been a tough year, but um, it's also kind of, I think, opened a lot of people's um, eyes to, to that you, you can do things uh, um, differently. Um, I know um, a lot of my, um, you know, engineers um, were not used to working at home. They've, they've always been um, in an office. And it, at first it was a little difficult, but once they got um, set up, they found actually there's, they're a bit more efficient. It's really easy to share a PowerPoint or a spreadsheet um, on Zoom or Teams um, and, and collaborate. And so I think we'll be seeing, you know, even after the vaccine gets distributed and we get COVID um, kind of under control that um, we'll still see um, a lot of people working from home. They won't be in the office as much as they used to. So yeah, our lives are in, you know, have, have been changed, I think forever. And, and in some ways for the good. It's funny you bring up the engineers. We were talking with another, um, with a, a test and measurement distributor recently about some trends for 2021 and really how, um, you know, the pandemic affected the way engineers design. And, and we were talking about just that, how it was a little bit challenging for right. the engineers at first, you know, so that seems to be a recurring theme here. It's, yeah. uh, <laughs> you mentioned that too, but then they've adapted. I mean, that's the really cool part and they actually enjoy it most of the time, right? So I, I do have a question. This is a little bit off topic, but not completely. You mentioned data centers, right? And we see a lot of AI being implemented into things. Do you think AI is actually going to be a push for more GAN type products because of the power efficiency, all that data that's being transferred back and forth, you know? So, you know, absolutely. Um, there's, you know, high performance computing um, is uses a very, is a lot of power. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, typically three kilowatt power supplies is what we see um, for those high performance um, computing applications. And that's a really um, a strong area for, for GAN. So I think, you know, AI drives data, AI drives lots of number crunching. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the autonomous vehicle is going to throw a lot of um, information into the cloud that's going to need to be crunched and then set back to the cars to, to alter um, how they, how they um, go. So AI and data, um, um, absolutely go together and, and, and data needs power. I think the other trend there with, uh, with, with AI um, is that, um, you know, there's two ways to save energy. Um, one is you can do it with hardware and that's kind of the GAN way, um, but you can also do it with software and AI is working on that. So in terms of power efficiency and power conservation, the two are complementary: hardware and software solutions. Or what's what's there in the future that's going to be fun um you know so i think you know we are talking to engineers here and um you know what i really think that what we aim to do is kind of give them something that they should be thinking about um you know and as GAN continues to and progresses to mainstream um what should engineers be thinking about when it comes to their designs do you have any advice for them um i think that they they um, ought to be thinking kind of about, you know, the obvious things first. Um, and that is that, you know, this is the best transistor um, in performance that's, that's ever been. And it's the basic building block for power systems. So you can build some, um, you know, really small, cool electronics with it. And the, the quality and reliability has been proven. It's customer back, it's automotive endorsed, you know, it's kind of out there. 
And there's a big product breadth, not, not only from GAN systems, but many suppliers in terms of voltages and currents and different product uh, um, profiles. So, so, you know, the engineer ought to be thinking, you know, here's a tool in my bag um, that I can use to build better systems. And then I think kind of the, the not so obvious is that um, timing, um, you know, um, if uh, they haven't been doing a the design, they may be falling behind and what happens to my companies, to my products market share, if uh, products fall behind because they're not um, keeping up with the latest trends. So, so I, I think keeping a, engineers should be keeping a, a, the pulse of the marketplace and seeing how they match up versus what's happening out there in the market. Do you think there's any areas where, you know, I know you see a lot of companies and you work with a lot of companies. Do you think there are certain areas that engineers should also think about, you know, designing GAN in where they're not currently, or you don't really see a lot of design? Um, so I think there's kind of five basic areas that, that we see um, GAN being used kind of every, you know, every company in the, in the sector, you know, one is chargers, two is audio, um, three is, is renewables, four is factory motors, five um, is automotive, and I forgot data center. So there's, there's six key areas um, where we're seeing GAN being used pretty much across um, the whole industry. So as we go into 2021, we've talked to, we've talked to various electronics industry folks uh, over the past week or two, and we've been looking at the trends, the future, the industry as a whole. You know, are there, is there anything that you think we're going to see more of in 2021? Anything that we should expect um, as an industry, you know, whether it be the supply chain or, you know, lead times or whatever, you know, whatever it is, um, what can we expect going into the new year? Yeah, well, I think the trends are super favorable for the industry right now. We see, you know, strong pull from the market um, for, for power electronics. You know, we're, we're actually, you know, we're seeing that orders are up. Um, you know, there's political stabilization in the U.S., which uh, should be nice. Um, COVID recovery coming. Um, stock markets are up. I, I think everybody, everything's kind of heading in the right direction for 2021 being a great year for the industry um, and a great year for GAN systems. Brian, I, your mind is always reeling with questions <laughs> for Jim. I want to make sure you don't have anything else. Before. <laughs> no, I think I asked, my, I asked my Jim. AI and my, and my automotive questions already of, of Jim. <laughs> Jim, thanks thanks for uh, joining us today. It was always a pleasure talking with you and GAN systems. Let, um, let everyone know where they could find more about you and GAN. Sure. Um, we're on the web, uh, www.gansystems.com. Um, all of our uh, data sheets, all of our um, uh, eval kits and reference designs are open source and online. So come visit us and see all the good information about implementing GAN into your systems. Awesome. And we will also include that link to the predictions piece. So you'll have that as well for the uh, viewers out there. Okay, great. Nicolette, Brian, it's always um, great to talk to you guys. Um, let's uh, continue to do that in 2021 and see how it plays out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks, Jim. All right. Bye.